Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Rainbow Six Siege in 2024. We're going to optimize Windows. After that, we're going to optimize Rainbow Six. I'm going to show you the difference be between Vulkan and DirectX 11. Also, how to change the latest version of your DLSS. And after that, we're going to change the parameter inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a, a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for NVIDIA, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people <laughs> are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. 
Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue, but if you're playing on a laptop, really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like asus dell or whatever the thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, pc in the wall unplug using it with the battery sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game so super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile another thing that i can recommend it's the intelligent standby list cleaner this is a software made by the guy from ddu um it's it's pretty amazing honestly um it will help if you don't have a lot of ram in your pc so if you have 4 gig of ram 8 gig 12 gig uh, after that you should be fine windows is doing the job properly so it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list so what i recommend normally it's look at your total memory here in my case it's 32 just divided by two so for me it's 16 just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized so it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering so i really recommend to use that one last thing is um i have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking cpu overclocking gpu depending on your brand and stuff and it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide i don't touch voltage so it's pretty safe you can expect sometimes two percent ten percent boost in your fps depending on your thermal depending on your component but it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your pc um, for the best performance so now let's go inside of the game so before launching the game i want to show you something you have two different api when you're launching the game the first one is directx 11 and the second one will be vulcan normally it really depends on your computer honestly it depends where your bottleneck is if you have a pretty good GPU, normally Vulkan will be better. And if you have a better CPU and you're bottlenecking because of your GPU, normally DirectX 11 will be better. So I recommend to test both and just look at your FPS. In my case, Vulkan is better. I want to mention also if you plan to uh, run an upscaling method like DLSS uh, or FSR, you will need to use Vulkan to make sure uh, that it will appear in your game. Also... I want to show you something. If you're using DLSS because you have an RTX card, a software called DLS Swapper, I'm going to put the link in my video description, will show all your game on your computer and you will see the version of DLSS that the game is currently using. So Rainbow Six Siege using the 3.1.30 uh, and it's not the best version right now. The best one is 3.5.10. So you click on it, you select this one, you swap and now you have the latest version of DLSS. So... If you want to try that, just download the LSS Swapper and change your DLSS version like this. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, so display adapter, make sure that you have your video card over there. If you're on a desktop PC normally, it's not an issue, but a lot of people are playing on a laptop. So sometimes you're seeing your integrate video card over there. You don't want to see that. You want to see your dedicate video card. Make sure you have your proper monitor. Make sure that you're playing native resolution. Don't lower your resolution. The game will look too blurry. The display mode, make sure also you're playing full screen, window and borderless, causing a little bit more input lag and also some stuttering. In the refresh rate, make sure that you're playing native. So if you have a 240 hertz monitor, go with 240 hertz. Aspect ratio, the majority of the people will play at auto, the recommended, it's 16 by 9, but it depends on your monitor for sure. I know some folks are playing 4 by 3. Me, I like to play 16 by 10, it's a little bit more stretch, easier to kill enemies, uh, but it's question of preference honestly, so maybe just do some testing with this one. VSync, it does activate it. VSync will add input lag in your game. You don't want that. You can use other technology like uh, G-Sync with uh, NVIDIA or FreeSync with Radeon to synchronize your GPU and your monitor to don't have your, those uh, tiering line when you're playing. FPS limit, I just put this one at off. I don't want the lowest input lag possible. But I want to mention something. If you have some issue with your thermals, don't go too crazy with that. Sometimes it's good to just lock the amount of FPS that you have with the amount of Earth. So for example, you're playing on a laptop, 120 Earth uh, screen, block your FPS at 120 because sometimes, yes, you can run 200 FPS, but you, you're gonna start st stuttering because your uh, CPU or GPU will start uh, trolling. So you don't want that. After that, you have the field of view. Field of view, I play at maximum. I want to mention also it's a vertical field of view. And also I want to mention when you go higher, you're going to lose some FPS. So if you're struggling with your FPS, maybe start at 70, do some testing. And after that, 
go higher. It really depends again on your computer and your preference. For the graphic, now the first one is the NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. If you have an NVIDIA card, for sure activate this. Texture quality, it really depends on the amount of VRAM on your GPU. The cool thing in this game, you're seeing the total that you have and what you're currently using. My recommendation only it's let 10% empty to make sure that you don't have any issue because you're also running Windows and stuff like that. So in my case, I can run very high. Anisotropic filtering, I recommend to go maximum if you can. If you're playing something like medium, maybe go with 4X, just follow the bracket over there, but it will help a little bit with your visibility, the anisotropic at 16X. After that, you will see that I have a lot, a lot of low because, you know, it's a competitive game. You want to see, you want visibility and FPS. So LOD quality, go with low, a nice 8% boost in your FPS. Shading quality, a nice 5% boost in your FPS. Shadow, you can get a lot of FPS with this one, but honestly, it will give you an advantage sometimes when you're peaking because shadow at eye, you can see a proper shadow at uh, the floor. So I really recommend to, to use the eye. Uh, if you're struggling with your FPS, go with medium with this one. Reflection quality, I recommend to go with low. It will stabilize a lot your FPS. You can get some crazy drop with this one. VFX, pretty much the same thing. A nice 5% boost over there. Ambient inclusion, it helps a lot with visibility. The game looks very flat without it, but I still recommend to use it at off. Lens effect, you don't want that. Zoom in depth of field, also you don't want that for your visibility and after that you have three upscaling method if you're using the Vul Vulcan API honestly the game is running very well without it I'm not a huge fan of it in this game the games look a little bit blurry for sure FSR 1 don't use it if you're struggling with your FPS and you just have FSR 2 I recommend to go with quality or ultra quality you will, will gain 8% in your FPS and it's not too bad when you're playing with it the best one is for sure the DLSS. DLSS, I recommend to go quality. Don't go under. Uh, the game looks too blurry. But if you're running the game well without those upscaling methods, don't use it. For anti-easing, I have two recommendations. The first one is off. This is the best one for your visibility. You will see a lot of line breaking and stuff. I know some people don't like it. If you don't like it, use FXAA. It's a pretty much a basic anti-aliasing. And it's doing the job and it doesn't take too much resources on your computer. Don't use the adaptive render scaling. So this one should be at zero. And my last recommendation is your raw input. Make sure that you're using this one at on for your mouse and your keyboard. So this is pretty much it for my Rainbow Six Siege guide in 2024. Uh, if you have any questions, just come in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.